truth. We're going to start taking this exalt this morning. Good job, Miss Amy. Thank you so very much for being a blessing to us. Let's look at this psalm this morning. Psalm, look at the screen on this psalm. Chapter 33. Psalm chapter 33. And these are texts this morning, really just one verse. We think about this very thought, one nation under God. I am thankful uh, to be living in America and to be a citizen of this great land. I'm thankful even more so to be a citizen of the land to come. Amen. And uh, the cross did make the difference, and I can rest my case there, uh, knowing that the land that is waiting for us is better than the one we're currently in. And I'm so very thankful uh, for that. We all know that these are perilous times for America. I want to preach kind of a patriotic message this morning. By title, One Nation Under God. We'll get there just in a minute. Uh, but I believe we are one nation under God. But we are facing perilous times. We're facing a society, um, spiritually speaking, that's going to pull us apart and to pull us in all kind of um, directions as far as our nation and our founding um, fathers and, and what they founded us upon, our rich religious freedoms and liberties uh, that we have come to enjoy and expect are being not only challenged but taken away. You know this to be true, and I could give start off by giving you just a list of things that have happened over the years, even here recently, um, that would kind of all stir us all up, and maybe even get us a little uh, fired up this morning of the things and the attempts that are being made uh, to take away our religious freedom. But no matter what any person does, no matter how powerful uh, that person may be, we will always be one nation under God, founded upon those very principles, and I'm thankful for our foundation, and uh, there is an all-out assault, you know this, there's an all-out assault on the Christian community in our country, and we feel that, and we know that to be true, and so that's daunting this morning for us to think about that, but our nation is more divided now spiritually, maybe than ever before, more divided spiritually, where, where the message that is preached is one of tolerance. And we're to accept all forms, you know I'm telling you the truth, all forms of religion, all forms of lowercase g, gods. We're to accept all these as if they were evil. Let me tell you something, folks. There's only one God. There's only one Jehovah God up in heaven. And he's the one that this nation was founded upon, his principles, his book. But we're divided in this nation um, over um, uh, the spiritual uh, religion, for lack of better words, if you will. And just by way of introduction, before we stand and read this morning, you got to know that any unit that is divided amongst itself will be what? Conquered or destroyed. Any unit that is uh, divided amongst itself will be uh, easily conquered or destroyed. So let's start from the top. Any, any nation that is divided amongst itself will be easily conquered and destroyed, and many people uh, believe that America is being destroyed from how? From within. And you know that to be true. You see it to be untrue. And I remember getting a book um, a couple years back about that very um, thing, how America is being destroyed from the inside. But any nation that's divided amongst itself uh, will uh, be easily conquered uh, and destroyed. And step on down, any, any business, any organization that is divided within its ranks will be uh, easily de uh, destroyed and conquered. Any church that is divided within and amongst itself uh, will be easily conquered and, and divided by, uh, by our adversary, by our enemy. enemy. And how many of you know Satan is doing all he can to destroy the church of the living God? And we've got to we got to realize that any division among um, the church will be make us easily be conquered. Hey, let's step on now. Any division among your family will make it hard for your family to 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 be successful. Your marriage, any division that Satan can create within your marriage and create that division there among a husband and wife will cause division and uh, easily be conquered and. Uh, destroyed. So on and on we can go down to the very heart. Here in this morning, any heart that is divided in its loyalty between God and the face of this world, hear me, Satan already has a head start on you. Satan has a head start on you and me conquering us if our heart is divided. If we're not truly and completely surrendered to God, then we too can be conquered. 
So now as we focus this morning on our a nation, it is certainly being divided within. Let me just give you this example, and then we'll stand and read and pray together. How many of you have seen and know what I'm talking about when I mention the coexist bumper sticker? Stickers. Raise your hand. You know what I'm talking about? Coexist slogan that came out. Okay, if you look at that, and I was going to put a picture up um, for you, I expect, but from the beginning to the end, it's the idea of tolerance. It's the idea that all religions are equal. The C standing for the crescent moon of Islam. And then all the way um, through it, including Wicca and all kind of stuff that are in there, you get to the T, which includes Christianity. And the message there, you'll see, if you'll pay attention on cards, you'll see it's usually, most of them are blue and with white lettering, but you can get all kind of colors, obviously. But just pay attention, you'll see it all over on vehicles. And what that's saying is there's a tolerance to religion. Um, it's an attack on our faith. By the way, it's an attack on the sovereignty of God. It's an attack on Almighty God Himself. It abandons our core absolutes and values. It rejects the sovereignty of all mighty God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You say, how so, preacher? And I'm just setting the table for us this morning uh, of what we're going up against. It says that all the way from Islam, Wicca, all the stuff in the middle, all the way to Christianity, they're all the same. How I many of you understand this morning, they're not all the same? I mean, understand this morning, it's only the cross at the end that made the difference. That's where we can rest our case. Islam, religion, none of that other junk ever did anything for anybody. And it certainly can't save your soul. It certainly can't get you to heaven. There's only one religion. There's only one uh, God up in heaven. There's only one Son, Jesus Christ, that died on the cross for you and to me to make a difference. And we cannot accept this argument in today's society. They're one nation or they're God. So now with that mindset of, of what we fight, and just a reminder of what we are up against today, look at Psalm 33, and if you're able, would you just stand as we read and pray together? If you're not, we certainly understand. Psalm 23, I could read several verses, but I just want to zone in on verse 12 this morning. Verse 12 said, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Read that with me. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And then the rest of the verse says, And the people whom he had chosen for his own inheritance. That first part of that verse is what we're focusing on this morning. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And notice Lord is in all caps. Well, that tells you and me, Jehovah God. Blessed is the nation who is Jehovah God, whose Lord is Jehovah God. God. He is the one true God. He's the only one um, that we are founded upon, and He's the only one that will help us out of this mess that we are in. One nation under God. Father, we love you this morning. We come to you for your help. Lord, our thoughts are certainly on our nation, but we're so thankful and grateful that your blessings upon America and that you blessed us to be a part of this great land. But at the same time, Lord, our hearts are burned, our hearts are concerned. Lord, knowing Knowing that Satan has created such a division, Lord, he's created such a, a, a tolerance and an attitude of all religions are equal, and, and you believe this, and you believe that, and it's all of equal value. But God, we know, we know how our nation was founded, Lord. We're going to be reminded of that um, somewhat this morning. I just trust you'll do something in our hearts, Lord. I, I know the, the setting, I know the day, I know uh, most everyone here this morning. But God, I pray you'll do a work in our hearts. Maybe fire us up, Lord. Help us to realize and get back in our own minds and hearts to the roots of being one nation under God and sticking with what uh, this great land was founded upon. God, I need your help. I never want to stand and preach and without uh, your anointing. So I pray you'll pour out on me this morning a special anointing. Your power will be upon me. You'll have me behind the cross. God, my thoughts and words. Lord, I only want to say this morning, I want to be a help and a blessing uh, to us today. Lord, your Holy Spirit has to penetrate the heart and uh, help the truth to go down deep. So I pray you'll do that. As I speak to the outer man, Lord, would you speak to the inner? And uh, Lord, draw us closer to yourself uh, this morning and help us to be renewed in our thankfulness and our loyalty um, to you and how you bless this land. It's in your son's precious name we pray. And amen. Well, thank you for standing, honoring the reading of God's word. One nation under God. You know, I, I reach in my pocket here, and, and on a lot of our money, we can uh, pull out different uh, facets of our currency system. And I'm thankful that although it's small, I can still read on here, in God we trust. 
But we know that even that very slogan is under attack. It must be removed from everything that is uh, uh, handled by the public. I'm thankful for the words in God we trust being printed on our money. I'm thankful for the words in our Pledge of Allegiance that you saw on the video where it says, One nation under God, despite what anybody tries to do today, and despite the attacks from our enemy, ultimately the devil, the, the evil one that's using people in this day and age in our nation to, to deter minds and to confuse people about how we were truly founded. I am thankful this morning we will always be one founded, one nation under God. I'm thankful for those words. And so many times we say the Pledge of Allegiance that we read right through those. But listen, folks, that makes all the difference. It makes all the difference. Well, we're not founded upon a nation that, that has a five or six of religions that are of equal value. No, we are founded upon a nation that is under God. But as I begin to think about that phrase, many years ago, you would agree and know better than I, that there was no doubt that saying was true. There was no doubt that we still live in America years ago when the majority of folks realized, even if they wouldn't say it, they realized in their own heart that, hey, America is one nation under God. And although we are still one nation under God, I believe we live in a different day today. We live in a day where we have to ask ourselves that question, as a nation, as a nation, I know the Christians do, but as a nation, do we still trust God? As a nation, is that is that saying on our on our currency today? Is it still true in God? We trust. I know we say it. I know in songs and different pledges, and it's been a part of our nation. But man, our nation has truly changed so much in turning away from God. I fear that we we're living in an America that's that's less true of today than it was 20 years ago. We live in America that's trying not to trust God. They're trying to teach our young kids. Man, I was in a conversation just a couple of weeks ago with someone, I believe it was, of talking about how, how young and how innocent our public schools, they're penetrating the minds of our kids with this film. There's a teacher in uh, the Greenville Church, uh, Greenville Church, their dad was telling about she's been in public schools for 40 plus years, and I think she's um, told them this year is it, it for her. She is taking it so much heat. She's set up to hear with what these kids, what's being pumped into the young minds of these kids. History books are being rewritten where these kids are learning. Listen, it's a mess. It's a mess that we uh, live in. And so we ask ourselves that question. So to answer that, let's look at three very simple things this morning that I hope encourage us and also challenge us. First of all, very simply, um, to answer, are we still one nation under God? We must look at our past. We must look at our past. If we take a look back into the nation's history, you'll find that without question, without question, we were founded upon godly principles. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that we can go to the facts. They always speak the truth. And we can go back to when this nation was founded. We can go back to when they even came over here for religious freedom. We can go back to the beginning of time for this nation and know that we are founded upon godly principles that man believed in divine authority. We live in a society today that challenges authority. Amen? I mean, it's all over the place. We have so much trouble with our younger uh, generation and, and, and society today. Look at our police officers. Bless their heart. Man, we need our nation needs to back our law enforcement. Amen? But even the authority that's put out to keep us safe and to keep uh, life uh, um, civil and orderly, you know, even that authority that's there for our own good is being challenged, but we know that our nation, and it was believed that we were under a divine authority. But as I look, and as I reflect, and as you see the happenings that we go through today, unfortunately, history is being written, rewritten today. Our kids are being told something differently um, in the school system than what our founding fathers of our country uh, really were. Being told that we were founded by Theist and secular humanists. We're being told that our country was founded um, as a spiritually neutral land where all religions would be accepted and that one a religion would not be regarded as any better than another. Listen, the fact that I trust Jesus Christ as my first Lord and Savior doesn't make me any better than anybody else. I'm just a sinner saved by grace, just like every one of you and everyone that comes to Jesus Christ. But it's all in who I put my faith in that gives me hope for the future. It's all who I put my hope in that 
knows that I can face tomorrow, and I know there's a heaven awaiting for me, and I don't have to worry about these other religions that did nothing for me that are vain. Their gods are dead, but our Lord rose on the third day. He lives up in heaven, and He's coming back one day for you and me. We have a divine authority. We're not a spiritually neutral land. We, we're laying based on, on the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, His Son, Jesus, His Word. Listen to me. Many of our founding fathers, you know, and I'm going to give you a few examples, but many of our founding fathers were Christians. Were Christians. Today is being taught and believed by the younger generation that no, 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 no. Let's take out the word Christian. Let's take out the word Christian because that has as its root word what? Christ. Let's take him out of the picture because we know that's a game changer. Jesus Christ is a game changer for all of the religions, and they're fine with you mentioning and believing in God because you have your God, I have my God, they have their God. They're fine with the term religion, but they want to get away from Christian and, and from the Christian foundation that we were founded upon. Let me give cite a few examples for you. Our founding fathers believe very strongly in God's presence, and when the, the earliest universities began, most of them, you know what the, what the Harvard, the Yale, the Princeton were founded for? Train one. Your leading university and your, your first universe, public universities were founded to train preachers of the gospel. Here's what a few of them say. When Harvard was established, their statement and purpose said, every student's main aim, their main goal is to know Jesus Christ. Public institution, their purpose statement, to know Jesus Christ and to recognize that Christ is the foundation of all earth. Wouldn't that be awesome if that was still true today? If that was still the public, uh, the, the, the purpose statement for public universities today, Yale, when it came into existence, said, God, and I quote, God is the source of all wisdom, and they required all their students to attend daily public prayer service, both morning and evening. That's why we don't even have Christians today that pray morning and evening. And here, yeah, when it was started, required all of their students to, to attend a public prayer service both in the morning and the night. Let's go now. We ban prayer from our school. We don't want to pray to the one true God. And we scratch our head and wonder what in the world would happen. Tell you what happened. We're trying to get out of the umbrella of one nation under God, under Jehovah God. These universities were started with this very heartbeat. Princeton, when it came into existence in 1746, proclaimed this, First is all learning contrary to the cause of Christ. Well, you say that today, we'd get in big trouble, wouldn't we? Cursed is all learning of any other religions. If it's contrary to Jesus Christ, then may it be a curse. Man, we'd be locked up, thrown up, put in jail, if not killed before we got there. But yet, this is what was on the minds and the hearts of not only our founding fathers, but our founding of universities as they aim to preach God and to preach Jesus Christ and bring everyone into a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Oh, if that was only true today. Oh, if that was only true today. That was the message we were giving in our schools. Our founding fathers, I go on to cite for you, were convinced that the psalmist was right in the verse we read, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, Jehovah God. Patrick Henry said this, It cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians. That's important. Again, today's society, we don't mind religion. Hey, let's be honest, everybody's got religion, right? Everybody's got religion. They said, no, 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 it's not founded by religion. It's founded by Christians, not on a religion, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ, end of quote. William Penn said, if we were hearts governed by God, we will be ruled by God. What a prophetic statement. We're not governed by God. We'll be ruled by Tyrant John Jay, who was the first justice of the Supreme Court. His name's not known, but his position is very uh, important. He said this, and I quote, It is the duty as well as the privilege and the interest of a Christian nation to select and prefer Christians for their rulers. Now, doesn't that make sense? you got a Christian nation. It makes sense to have some Christian leaders. 
And this was the foundation of what our nation was built on, what, what these men and their hearts had, and, and what their goal and what their mindset was. Dave Madison, um, chief architect of the Constitution, said, Religion is the basis and foundation of our government. My, these things are still true today. We understand better. We, we see now why America is so different. And we see why there's such a pull against um, Christians today and the Christian community because we've left our roots. We've left what this nation was founded upon. Schools in our country used one primary textbook. And you know what that was? It wasn't a math book. It wasn't the English reader, which we need both, and we need all those other subjects, but the main and most used textbook was the Word of God, the Bible. In fact, history tells us that Delaware Indians came to George Washington and personally requested that their children be permitted to study in his schools because they wanted their children to learn moral and integrity. Morality and integrity was the two things that they wanted their kids to learn. And as I continued to read and learn about that, I even found out that they didn't even understand all the Bible said. They didn't understand the message behind the Word of God, that they knew that the things in the Word of God would help their kids turn out right. And so they said, George Washington, we want our kids in your schools so they get what they need to get from the Word of God. How do you understand the main textbook in our schools today was the Word of God. We have a lot of different generations. <laughs> we have a lot less trouble. We have a lot less problems if the Word of God was the focus once again in our education system. These early uh, pilgrims wanted uh, their children to learn the principles that were taught in the Bible, but now we live in a society that's preventing Bibles in schools. That's, that's bullying kids who try to bring their Bibles and, and break it out at, at lunchtime and read it. Bullying kids that would even speak of the Word of God or even live by principles of the Word of God. Hey, God's Word will stand. God's Word will always stand. It'll come under attack and it'll, it'll be prevented in certain places, but God's Word will always stand. And by the way, it's not just some ancient book of rules. Amen. But that's what society wants you all. Oh, you can't live by that ancient book. That's not relevant. To today, we just hold on and watch what happens in this country and turn to Ezekiel day when Revelation tells us how relevant it is to today. Because it's right on point, my friend. It is right on point, relevant for our every need today. Thomas Jefferson, his president, of course, he also served as head of the school board in Washington, D.C. Jefferson insisted that one of the two books to be used was the Bible. John Quincy Adams said this, and I quote, the first and almost the only book deserving, listen to this, of universal attention. It's the Bible. These are the leaders of our nation. This is why our nation was so blessed of God, because we put God in His rightful place. We put His Word in His rightful place. We live by the principles in God's Word. He said this is, should be the only book that has universal attention. Andrew Jackson said the Bible is the rock on which this republic rests. True statement? Very true. But is it not being taught like never before today? Man, the Word of God. People don't want the Word of God. People don't want to accept the Word of God. They don't want to read the Word of God. Even the, the Word of God and the language there is, is coming under attack with all these different uh, um, verses that are coming out. But it's the rock on which this republic rests. Abraham Lincoln said, I believe the Bible is the best gift God has ever given to man. I believe the Bible is the best gift God has ever given. Can I amen that right there? I believe what he said. The Bible is the best gift along with everything in the Bible. And Jesus Christ coming to die on the cross. It's the greatest gift we could ever have. It's the greatest gift any nation could ever have. And I, too, agree with our uh, leaders of yesteryear that it should be the rock in which this republic is. It should be the only book that gets universal attention. Because it truly changes lives. Listen, don't let everybody tell you that our country was started by a bunch of deists or secular humans. It was started by Christians who believed in Jehovah God. Don't let, don't fight the lie that we were started to be spiritually neutral or to have one religion that is being just as valuable as another. That's from the hog pen, folks. From the hog pen. 
Don't, don't, don't buy it. Don't be persuaded by it. Don't let the young people within your reach and in your grasp and in your influence, don't let them be sold that lie from the devil. Anybody that says that our founding fathers were in a secular government does not know our history. George Washington said this, it is impossible. It is impossible to rightly govern the world without God and the Bible. How prophetic is his thing? To rightly govern. Not many people would say today we live in a nation that's rightly governed. Because we're getting away from God. We're getting away from the Word of God and its influence in our lives. Regardless of what anyone says, church, we are one nation under God. One nation under God. And as Christians, we must rise up and stand up and not be turned away and not, not neglect our spiritual heritage. Man, I'm thankful for that. Again, I'm thankful to be in America. Am I concerned for it? Yes. It's a perilous time. Yes. I don't believe we have much longer. I believe Jesus is going to come back. And I'm teaching Jalen about how the trumpet's going to blow. And one day, uh, last week, I believe it was, she said, Daddy, are we about to hear that trumpet? I said, yes, baby. I believe we're about to hear that trumpet. And he's going to blow it. And we're all going to go to be with him. But until then, we've got to stand up for what this nation was founded upon, one nation under God. So I'm thankful for our past. I'm thankful for our past. The second of all, let's look at our present. Let's look at our present. Man, there's so many illustrations. Again, I can give you a list of things that would inspire us up this morning. Let me give you just a couple. Starting in 1962, prayer was taken out of school. You, you remember, just like I'm about to tell you, I remember Dad telling me, public school. Billy Graham Hill, the one of the, the young men that would come and go to the public and dress system of the school. How many remember that? You go to every room. I don't know how it was back then. I don't know how it was back then. Too. And they would have prayer and Bible reading in your public school every morning. The Bible was the focus of getting their morning started up. But in 1962, prayer taken out of schools. One year later, the Bible removed from schools. In 1980, the Ten Commandments were removed. The court said, and I quote, if the Ten, listen to this, if the Ten Commandments were allowed to hang on the wall, then the children would read them. If the Ten Commandments were allowed to hang on the walls, the children would read them and meditate on them. And then that would cause them to respect and obey them. Your little home. Take them out of the school and look what we have now. It may not be a bad idea for kids to read every day. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. I guarantee you there'd be less casualties and less shootings in our school today if the Ten Commandments were left up in the hallway. If they were taught. If the Bible was read over the PA system. If every school, every day kids came to school and they start their day off with prayer. Prayer to Jehovah God. Not the whatever God you want to pray to, but the only one that can make the difference. I don't think it would be a bad idea for our kids to go back to reading the Ten Commandments in the schoolhouse. I believe it would give us a better environment. I believe there would be still lives living today that would not have been taken so innocently, so wrongly. There would, be not so, there would not be so much adultery committed and fornication committed of the young, our youngsters. When they look at the revered Ten Commandments, God's Word says, Hey, God, Jehovah God, God that created me, God that put everything in motion, God that created this nation, God that this nation was found upon, the God of the Bible, Jehovah God says, Thou shalt not. I believe that would clean up a lot of things. Up a lot of things in our schools, in our nation. Well, now the Ten Commandments being forced out of federal buildings, some stood in place for over 200 years, being taken down. And in every news conference, we say, "Why this kid this time to go from the school?" Oh, I know. I forgot. No, it's fault. I forgot that. It's his fault. Nice fault. Back in the Bible, it's the stone's fault. First murder it is. I don't know if our fault is. It be such a bad idea that we leave those things back in. By the way, there are still kids that cut teeth on the school board. Still get my teeth. How can we be praying? How can we read this God's word and stand on it? How can we maintain our school board? 
we went to a big study on the Ten Commandments, and they said why we didn't do that. We didn't do that. It works so much without the Ten Commandments really being there. How many of us as Christians do a good by the Ten Commandments? They said, they said it's the future of America. It's about the Constitution. It's an obey the law of God. The future of America is about the Constitution. It's an obey the law of God. Yes, on the money, thank you. It says that God is good. But in our present state, do we obey to a trust in God? Do we obey to a trust in God? I don't know about you, but I think the question is written by God. I've got at least three things that I want to go over with you. I want to go over with you today. It's kind of very constructive. Get on the face of the whole stuff today. This is your bad life question. To be exposed to stuff. To understand stuff. Not to fight that stuff. But there is this freedom that we have that we can go to church to continue on the work of God. May God help us to realize that our present state is not true. We still live. Hey, praise God, we still live in the greatest country. Amen. I'll thank you. And as listen as Christians, we should. Thank you to be citizens by the state. Any one of us that's born in China, Pakistan, Iran. Amen. In the sovereignty of God, God, you and me to be born here. It's a good deal now to be to be citizens of this great land. That is something we need to be thankful for. We could we could have found ourselves in the streets of India begging for food this morning, wondering where our next meal is going to come from. God has blessed America, but we must remember, with that blessing also comes responsibility. We, we live in a nation that they don't like that word responsibility. We, we, we're, 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 we're growing up a, a generation that does not know anything much about a responsibility. One man said that's why abortion is legal, because people want to enjoy the sin for the season, but they take no responsibility for their actions. And I'm in the countless lives, precious lives of little babies, because we know life begins at conception. Amen. We don't have to see the baby to know and feel the heartbeat and to see the heartbeat. And we're taking so many lives of precious babies. Why? Because we don't want to be responsible for the actions of our sin. Listen, God can forgive the sin. Don't, don't, two wrongs don't ever make a wrong. Murder is what abortion is. Amen. I said murder is what abortion is. Taking the lives of these precious, innocent children. God help us to realize the current state of our country is far from where it used to be. Hey, far from where it needs to be. But hey, God's been on the throne for years. And I believe in all my heart we'll get to it one day. We'll be a people that will turn back to God one day. If we'll turn back to God, we may just see another way of going to the Lord. We may just see one more revival happen like the great way to the Lord who comes back. Take us home now, I pray, and I come down with God. We are so on you this morning. Our past, we know what we found it on. Our present, we know, and I can give you more, more illustration, but we know what we're going through. We know what we're fighting for. And that's what the third thing in closing is. Let's just look at our future. Let's look into our future. Now, we all know looking at things and seeing the direction of, of our society. By the way, how many of you realize November? Let's just let me step out a little bit. November, how many of you realize Christians ain't got to get off? Isn't it sad we live in a country? Christians, God fearing, God all the people Christians can't go to the polls to vote for someone they know their conscience feels good about. Don't misunderstand. I believe we have an obligation to vote. Isn't it sad? We're trying ourselves to stay there. I tell them today, I'm thankful I'm teaching those rest on the Jews who can fight this. Because who is up on the throne? Much greater power up there than down here. The heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. We now can go to peace and on the throne. Can I tell you this morning in closing quickly? We can only hope for America. We can only hope for America. There's no fixing it at this point, is there? There's, there's, there's no just turn over a new leaf at this point. We, we, we've gone so far in the wrong direction, church. I'm 
America is to repent for all our sins. For a holy God realizing our sin, our only hope is that we turn back to God. Our only hope is that we put God back in His rightful place. Our only hope is to put the Word of God back in the schoolhouse. Our only hope is to put the Ten Commandments back up in every federal building across this land, back in the public schools, back in the public places, and realize that more than just having them there as decoration, they're there to guide us, to lead us, to help us know how to live a peaceful life. And a life that's pleasing to our Lord Jesus Christ. Our, our, our national morality is gone so far we're on a crash course to destruction. And listen to me, I've said it before in other messages, if God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for their sin, America is no better than that. And I believe, I'm telling you, I believe God's destruction is coming. God's punishment is coming. No nation is above the justice of Almighty God. And it's coming. It's coming. I like the words that we find in, in Luke 13, 1 to 5. It says they were present at the season. Some had told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. This is Luke 13, 1 through 5. And Jesus answered and said to them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, because they suffered such things. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Or these 18 who, upon whom the Tower of Siloam fell and slew them. Thank ye that they were sinners above all the men that dwelt in Jerusalem. I tell you again, nay or no, that's not the case, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. And I'm telling you, we don't like to hear that word repent today. Even sometimes Christians get a little squirmy when we hear the word repent, but that is the only way back to Jesus. As a nation, we've got to repent. As a church, we've got to repent. As a husband, we've got to repent. As a wife, we've got to repent. As a Children, this morning, we've got to repent and say, God, I have failed you. God, I have strayed from you. God, I have went my own way. And God, I come to you and I repent of my sin. I repent of my wrongdoing. And I turn back to you this morning, putting you in your right place. I know that the setting here is a lot different than the setting for our nation. Praise God. Unfortunately, some churches are not the case. Government sanctioned churches. I'm preaching the gospel. This is what we have to do. Just tell them that. Amen. And if God tells them, hey, I'm old enough. I'm old enough. God is the same. Put him in the right place. Put him back in the right place. The church would say we need better laws and we need better government. The church would say we need more law enforcement. But hey, I can say we don't love law enforcement. They may not think they're doing a pretty good job. They're too fast to support them to get what they need to, to keep doing a good job. They were going to thank God for a law enforcement. God forgive us for treating them like we have over these last few years. Some say we need more teachers in the classroom to be better curriculums, but it's the same. All, we all have an opinion of what we think about America. Very few of us understand what we get back from the people. We need to repent of our sins. Repent of our turning away from the God of the Bible. 2 Corinthians 7 14. I'm strange to any of you. If my people, my people, which are called by that, my name shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive them. I'll forgive their sins. We need to be clear about that. Hey, we understand that that verse is not written for the government. The verse is not written for the White House or for the president. The verse is not written for the unstable. God still says, whether you're a minority or majority, it does not matter. God says, it's my people. Yeah. The devil has some time, but God has a long time. It, it don't matter. I mean, our Sunday school this morning, we're talking about something else. He said, hey, you know, sometimes we may find ourselves in the minority, but when you're with God, you're always in the majority. Amen. And he says, it's my people. Folks, it's all us. It's all us. If you want America to turn around again, we better not wait for it to happen under Washington. You know, that ain't going to happen. But it's God's people. It's God's people once again turn their hearts to Him, turn from their wicked ways, seek His face, humble themselves, pray. Although I believe we can seek God for something once again in our land. If God's people will get right with God, if God's people will get focused on God, if God's people will get hungry for God, then I believe we can see a mighty movement of God. But what we have in today's society is one group of God's people. Against another group of God's people. The church is different. That's the one thing about the beautiful about this Burlington Revival. You, you, you see a different people. They all believe in Jesus Christ. You know, so they could not stand the heat that's underneath the tent that are coming uh, from different religious backgrounds. 
up and they're all coming together for the cause, for the greater cause, and that is seeing souls saved. I don't believe we should compromise our standards. I don't believe we should compromise our doctrines. I don't believe we should compromise the Word of God. I do believe it's time to quit worrying about petty differences and realize that there's a greater cause for Christ, and we need to all come together, put our hearts together, put our minds together, join our hands together, say, God, we're going to serve you until you call us home. We do this quote from the bank in CT. Third time we went, there was 33,000 people there, 53 people walked the aisle that night alone and accepted Jesus Christ and took it upon them. He preached on the blood of Jesus, and now we need to get focused on what the blood does for us. And in this sermon, he said this. He said, it's time for the church to quit splitting hairs over little things that don't matter and get focused on what matters to Jesus. Get focused on seeing lost souls saved so they can have power. Or to keep it in fellowship with other churches. We need to quit splitting and realize that God's called us. He's called us to be a part of the church. God help us to do it, man. I love this nation. I love USA, greatest country in the world. I also know that God's a just God. I'm telling you, I know you believe it, but let's get some head bumps in it. Judgment coming. You know, some people said last eight years so far, that judge, I don't know that they'd be right. Judgment coming, man. Judgment is coming for this great nation. We call on our faith system to pick up. We know one thing's true. One thing you may think you're, you're, you're perfect. I don't mean that in a bad way, but you're right with God in every way. The only way we call it all is because of God. Did you know my faith is true? Did you know foundation firm to you is tied to every area of life? And then when I start off the service, I think our nation is divided. You know, things divided is deeply controversial. The nation is business, the family, the church, the Americans to a whole country. They want to sold out for that. But there is a cost. There is a cost. Father, we love you. God, I am so grateful for this nation. America is the greatest nation in the world. 